Thanks to CuriosityStream for sponsoring today's video. The Hunt for Alien Life It is an endeavour that has inspired scientists to send data collecting rovers to the surfaces of other planets. Astronomers have listened out across the sky with radio telescopes. Messages and data carrying satellites have been launched out the other way. Countless people have poured countless hours into searching for even the slightest signs that we are not alone. We have done all this because in the infinite vastness of our universe, it is incomprehensible to some of us that we represent the only time that life has arisen. And it would be the profoundest discovery humanity has made so far if we learned that we are not. Of course, there are many people out there who claim that while humanity has been seeking evidence of alien life, that same life has been spending its time seeking to discover us. Some have claimed that aliens have already visited us, and are even here currently, hiding and invisible. Here, sadly, the evidence starts to get questionable. There have been so many hoaxes, faked videos filmed on grainy shaky cams, or even genuine mistakes where natural phenomena or satellites are taken for UFOs, that many people are now a little wary of entertaining such theories. There have even supposedly been times where the US government has deliberately, subtly propagated UFO conspiracy stories to draw attention away from their real top secret technological projects like the stealth bomber. All in all, ascribing extraterrestrial origins to these phenomena is often factually incorrect, and poor science. And because we do not understand something, does not mean we should jump to the idea that it must be aliens. And yet, if that's true, why did NASA, the US Navy, and other agencies in the US government join forces in 2022 to discover the growing number of UFO sightings? The answer surprised me. It's because it turns out they have no reasonable choice. There is now such a growing wealth of evidence, good, sound, scientific evidence from multiple powerful detection devices and reliable, regular military pilot accounts of phenomena that cannot be explained by modern technology or our understanding of science, that the rational thing to do is to investigate with an open mind. However strange it might be to admit, it is no longer reasonably possible to do anything but agree that something weird is going on. Now, it is only a question of asking, what could it be? I'm Alex McColgan and you're watching Astrum, and today I will show you exactly what has caused the US government to start taking unidentified flying objects meandering through their skies much more seriously. The first UFO sighting in modern times was by an American businessman named Kenneth Arnold in 1947. As he looked out across Mount Rainer, Arnold claims he saw nine crescent-shaped silver objects travelling at several thousand kilometers per hour through the air. He likened them to saucers skipping on water in the way that they moved. He initially thought they might be secret military jets. But later he and other witnesses of these crescent craft wondered if they might have been extraterrestrial in nature. The media picked up his turn of phrase about the saucers, and the idea of flying saucers entered the national consciousness. Before long, other people started reporting alleged UFO encounters. The US became enraptured with the idea of UFOs. However, the US military did not take this idea quite so seriously. While initially they were understandably alarmed at the report of unknown aircraft moving around in their airspace, particularly coming right after World War II, the programs they set up to investigate UFOs were eventually shut down in 1969. Project Blue Book, the last of these programs, collected 12,618 UFO reports, but ultimately concluded that they were almost all misidentifications of natural phenomena or just man-made aircraft. With such a damning report to go on, the US government officially pulled funding from the project, and investigation into UFO sightings officially ceased. Partly as a result of Project Blue Book's findings, a certain degree of stigma became associated with seeing a UFO. 
Anyone who claimed to have done so was often ridiculed or considered crazy. It came down to a question of evidence. If aliens were real and were visiting our planet, where was the proof of their evidence? Of course, to answer that, we need to define what we would consider to be reliable proof. Let's imagine that a person came up to you and claimed that they'd seen a silver disc shoot across the sky at a speed far faster than any airplane was capable of. Would you consider a single person's account to be proof that he'd seen an alien spacecraft? Well, not necessarily. Human memory is unreliable. Even if you trust the character of the person in question enough to believe that they weren't lying to you, they might be misremembering details or maybe had misjudged how fast the spaceship they saw was going due to some optical phenomenon. Ah, they cry, but I recorded it on film. You look, but unfortunately, the video they provide is grainy and only gives you a blurry glimpse of the spacecraft. Is that proof? Again, you might well be skeptical. Even if this video is not a deliberate hoax, and it's so easy to fake film these days, it could be a digital artifact or some broken pixel in the camera, and it could just be some natural or man-made phenomenon neither of you had seen before. So what would be a good proof of alien spacecraft? Ideally, for me, I would like evidence that was seen by multiple trustworthy people, the more the merrier. It would need to be recorded by multiple pieces of hardware to eliminate the risk of it being glitchy technology and it would have to evidence characteristics that completely ruled out it being any man-made phenomenon or natural event. Best of all, it would be repeatable. If it kept occurring, it would provide more opportunities for study to rule out other causes. Which brings us to the event that started things all off again, in 2004 and the USS Nimitz. The Navy aircraft carrier was traveling through the ocean near Southern Carolina in November of that year on a routine training exercise. Another nearby vessel, called the USS Princeton, had recently received upgrades to its radar and had started noticing strange aircraft in the area. These crafts descended from 80,000 feet to 20,000 in a blistering speed, before vanishing out of sight entirely or later shooting back up again. After a few days of this, the Princeton called the Nimitz, asking them to send someone to see what was going on. Two FA-18F Super Hornet jets were scrambled. Each jet had a weapons camera, but no weapons, as this was only meant to be a training exercise. Each jet had two pilots on board. Upon arriving at the scene, all four pilots quickly spotted what they were looking for. A strange, tic-tac-shaped object was moving weirdly zipping back and forth above a frothy, boiling patch of water in the sea below them. It had no visible means of propulsion, no wings, no rotors. It was about the size of a jet and a whitish color. The object suddenly stopped its zigzag. It had seen them. It whipped around and traveled up towards the jet as if it were intending to meet them in the air, but then rapidly accelerated away faster than anything the pilots had ever seen before. Baffled by what they'd witnessed, the pilots returned to base, only for the radio operator to inform them that they'd begun tracking the craft again, except it was now over 60 kilometers away. It had got there in under a minute of leaving the pilot's view. This was an object seen by four trained professional pilots on the clock, aircraft cameras, and modern, advanced ship-based radar from one of the most technologically advanced nations in the world. This ticks many of the boxes for good, reliable sources of evidence. This report was logged, and nothing else was initially done with it. You might just point to this being a strange story, if it wasn't for this authenticated footage that we have of it, confirmed by the US government in a Freedom of Information request. But the strangest thing about this was that it kept happening. The phenomenon is currently repeating. Navy and Air Force pilots were spotting strange objects in the sky so frequently, some were claiming that it was almost a daily occurrence. Many were embarrassed to mention what they'd seen, fearing ridicule. 
That said, it became so common that the Navy started handing out cards to be kept in Navy pilot kneeboards in their cockpits about what to do in the event of such a sighting. Between 2004 and 2021, 144 reports came in from Navy personnel of seeing unidentified objects in the sky, 80 of them being observed by multiple sensors, 11 accounts of near misses with jets, and only ever one being positively identified. Between 2021 and 2022, sensing that there might be something to all this after all, the Navy began destigmatizing reporting and started actively encouraging its pilots to record what they saw. 247 new reports came in, and an additional 119 incidents were reported to have happened in the past. Sure enough, that's almost one every other day. In total, the number of unidentified objects had risen to 510. So, what were these objects? Their natures and probably their origins varied. Some behaved like drones, with the Navy detecting radio signals coming to and from them. Only, they stayed up in the air far longer than any drone on the market was capable of doing. Some were more like aircraft, traveling in formations, exhibiting unheard of acceleration. Some could both fly and submerge underwater, seemingly at will. Some acted like balloons, albeit with unknown means of remaining up in the air, sometimes defying wind currents by remaining completely motionless or even moving against it. No doubt, of those 510, some will simply be glitches in technology. This strange triangle in the sky is thought to not really be that shape. Instead, the unique design of the night goggles is thought to be distorting the light in this apparent drone, in a similar effect to lens glare, but uniquely tailored to this technology. However, it's still concerning that the Navy does not know what these drones were doing circling a US Navy vessel while it did training exercises at night. The Navy started calling these objects UAPs, or Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, in the hopes of removing the negative connotations associated with UFOs. And this has changed again recently to unidentified anomalous phenomena. And while they do not want to assume that this is alien in origin, they're also not ruling it out. They reported their findings in a congressional hearing on the 17th of May 2021, and now are regularly, and somewhat transparently, publishing reports for the general public about the ongoing investigation, provided it doesn't give away too much about classified sources or technology they are working on. Right now, they are attempting to collect as much data as possible, knowing that it will lead to better science. And that right there is the biggest shift of all. When you see the US government reaching out to the wider community to ask, what are these things we keep seeing? it certainly confirms that there is something to see. All in all, it certainly makes you wonder. Of course, all this might end up being technology belonging to rival nations. After all, governments around the world are always developing new, secret technologies, and they are hardly likely to admit to them. However, it's telling that America does not seem to believe that these things are theirs, according to the UAP Task Force's report, neither do they know of them belonging to other countries. Perhaps I'll leave you with this final quote by NASA Chief Bill Nelson. NASA is one of the agencies working with the UAP task force to figure out the nature and origins of these phenomena. They are lending the task force experts to help rule out any natural phenomena that NASA is aware of. And they don't know what it is, and we don't know what it is. We hope it's not an adversary here on Earth that has that kind of technology. Uh, but it's something. And, uh, and so this is a mission that we're constantly looking. What, who is out there? Who are we? How did we get here? How did we become as we are? How did we develop? How did we civilize and are those same conditions out there in a universe that has billions of other suns in billions of other galaxies 
It's so large, I can't conceive it. But what do you think? Could these phenomena have innocent human explanations? Or are you convinced that there's something more to them? Something that can only be explained by alien life? Post in the comments below what you think and let me know if you've enjoyed this topic. If so, I can explore this subject more, particularly when the US government releases their next report later this year. In the meantime, Earth is not the only place people are searching for alien intelligence. Astronomers in observatories around the world scour the skies for hints and clues of life out there. The sponsor of today's video, CuriosityStream, has a great series called Curious Minds Space that explores the subject in their episode, Are We Alone in the Universe? As well as asking what it would mean for humanity if we ever found out that we weren't. A potentially scary thought. But CuriosityStream isn't just limited to extraterrestrials. Their vast library of award-winning films and documentaries covers hundreds of topics on science, history, nature, travel, and more. They are a worldwide streaming service that is dedicated to all of the history buffs and scientists out there, with more programs being added every week. Just saying, I really enjoy their content. They are cheaper than other subscription services, and if you use our promo code ASTRUM, you can get an additional 25% off your subscription cost. Head on over to curiositystream.com forward slash astrum or click the link in the description below to check it out. Thanks for watching. I also have a playlist delving into the Fermi paradox and wow signals. If you like to ponder what's out there in the expanse of space, this playlist is for you. A big thanks to my patrons and members too. If you want to support the channel and have your name added to this list, check the links below. All the best and see you next time.